Look at how many there are. I have a big net that if I catch them in labor, I usually set them up in the big net. And they do fine, they're nice and comfortable. And then I'll leave the babies in the net for a couple of, you know, a couple of days out. She's getting hungry. She's gonna, I think she's done. I gotta get her out of there where the babies will become lunch. Hi guys, welcome back. I wanted to start out by showing you guys what I got. This is not gonna be a marker demo today. I just wanted to show you what I got. Check this out. And it doesn't end there. Yes, I went a little marker crazy. So what happened to my parkous? <laughs> Why did I need all of these? Well, the story goes like this. Well, first of all, you're going to have to excuse my hands today. Mina got me good. She got me here, 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 somewhere over here. It's not her fault at all. I was holding her, and uh, my daughter's boyfriend walked into the room, and he, but he made the mistake, and he yawned in front of her. Well, the action of him stretching his upper body and yawning is offensive to her. She thought he was posturing and she went crazy. It was like, did you ever see like the road runner where she, they, like he spins his legs and runs off before, you know, but he stays still while his legs are spinning. Well, she went black beard on me completely, instantly gaping mouth open and with her little claws went like that in my hand and she got me good. I ended up having to put her in her big cage and letting her calm down by herself. I've never seen a bearded dragon react that way to a yawn. It does make a little bit of sense. So I'm a little scratched up today. Sorry about that. When I got the parkour markers and I was doing the review, I said I didn't have markers. It wasn't 100% true. I did have an old, an old Hulu set and they were practically dry as a bone. Before I got the parkours, I had done a sponsored video for a company that gave me a 100 marker set, which was really nice, but they were water markers, not alcohol markers. Now for water markers, it was a gorgeous, I mean, gorgeous set. And I basically used it as a prop in, when I filmed my room because it was all beautiful and colorful, but they were impractical. I didn't create art with them and so I didn't even consider myself like I own markers because I would never use them to begin with they do, you know water markers kind of destroy paper but that's a whole other conversation to be having so when Parku contacted me and said you know would you do a sponsored video for us and I said you know yeah I had called my daughter and I said do you want the other markers I don't need all this in my craft, you know, in my craft room. And she told me, no, mom, I don't want them. And she was emphatic. She does not want my markers. So I just picked my little markers up, walked across the street, and we have some little kids that live there. They're like between like maybe four and seven and handed it to their mother. And I said, mazel tov, go let your kids play with them. The day before Parku had offered me a sponsorship, I had gone out and I bought Prismacolors. And I told you guys I was in the market to buy it. It was just a coincidence that I had purchased this set, which I will do a, a review on um, at another time and I'll do a demo. And they're really cool. There's some some things that are not as good, and but mostly these are great markers. And what I loved about this is that these colors match the pencils. So I could do a lot of stuff with it that match up with the colors of my Prismacolors. 
So I went out and I wanted to get a case for it because the case that it comes in is really crappy. I mean, garbage. For the amount of money I spent on this, which was several hundred dollars, more than several, <laughs> they were expensive. The case that it comes in was just cheap, plastic, flimsy. Crayola gives you a better product uh, case. So that's what I loved about the Parkus. They, they came in this really lovely plastic hard case with little slots that click in. So I really liked it. Well, in walks my daughter, takes one look at my Parkus and goes, thanks mom, I'll take the markers and walks out with my Parkus. <laughs> It's like, I wasn't offering you my alcohol markers. And she was giggling as she was walking out the door. I don't know if she she knew or, and watched my, or watched my video and said, I know she's got more markers like that. But she walked out with my parkours. So she did promise to give them back to me if I need them, when I need them. Because not, not if, it had really cool colors in it. That's what I wanted to show you on this, is these, this lovely case. You cannot find marker cases like this. They don't make really huge marker cases unless it's for like Copics. And I needed something practical. So I really love this case. There's only one on Amazon. I mean, literally for, this is the 157 set. There's a 200 set also, but I bought the 157. So this case is really cool and it closes up like that. Becomes double. And then you take this and it has a like a thing to put it in. This is my markers. So, but that's not even what we're doing today's video on. We're going to do a color combination today, a special one. You guys might recognize these four colors. This is the color combination that Tracy, who's one of my moderators on the Facebook group, she's doing her monthly challenge. That's her baby. And she picked four colors. And I think she said she pick, used a color picker to pick the four colors that people will use for her challenge. Now you can... You can participate in the challenge. It's these four colors. It's permanent red, palm of violet, Prussian green, and salmon pink. Now, as soon as I saw this combination when she put it out, because she didn't tell me what combination pencils. I mean, we talked about the, the whole entire challenge thing uh, behind the scenes, but she didn't give me anything that was specific, any information. These are the four colors that she put out, and it came from a color picker. And a lot of newbies are going to go look at this and go, hmm, that looks really good. It's a great color combination. This is got some twists in it. Now, I don't know if she realized it when she put it out, but if you don't know what the twists are with this color combination, you may do your picture and it will screw up. And so we talked about it again behind the scenes. I wasn't going to tell people what the twist was, but then we talked about it and it's like, well, we have a lot of newbies on the, the list. I don't want them to create a, a picture that they work really hard on when there's a twist that it can come out really bad. So we just talked about, you know, maybe this time around, I'm going to show you guys what that twist in these pencils is. So we have these four colors. Now the permanent red, Parma Violet. Now this is a great learning lesson. We have the Prussian Green and we have the Salmon Pink. Let's look at these four colors. Looks great. Let's go for it. Make your picture but something could happen when you're blending these colors. This is a very difficult uh, lay down. Look at the red. This is on the yellower side of red. So we're going towards the orange. It's permanent red. It sits right where the you have middle red. Like say you have like red on the tonal scale and we have red right in the middle and that's dead red, but it's not blue red, it's not yellow red, it's red red. Then it'll start moving towards the orange side. 
So I would, I would put permanent red right about here, okay? Where poppy red would be all the way here and you would have orange, which is more of the salmon color. So poppy red would be here, permanent red would be here, and red red would be over here. And then as you're going this way, you'll get your blue reds. So now you have your permanent red and your Parma violet. Parma violet is a purple which sits between the blue and the red, but hails. So if you have blue, say, I don't have a blue pencil here. Here's your blue and your red. Parma violet, right in the middle, you would form your violet colors because blue and red make violet. It hails slightly towards the blue. So here you have a blue violet. Got blue. You've got red. Now we're going to go to the salmon. The salmon is going, you add in a little bit of white, you add in your yellow, and you're going to get your salmon. It's a yellow pink. So it's hailing towards the orange side. It's got a lot of orange in it. So we're going to say it has orange. It's closer to orange than it really is to pink. So here we have blue, red, orange, and then we're going to toss in the green. And you are gonna go right to here. You've got your green and then yellow. So we have yellow. We have the red, violet, Blue and yellow, which are primary colors, form your green. And what do you get when you blend up all these colors? You get mud. It's going to turn brown. So here you're thinking you're working with these beautiful colors. And then all of a sudden, your edges are going to turn really mucky. The trick to this okay, to this color combination is you cannot blend them. You can use them as a palette. Now watch what happens. Red mixes beautifully with the salmon. Look how pretty this combination is. You've got the permanent red, then you have like an orangey red that's very pretty and then it moves off into the orange pink right here. Beautiful color combination, it works. You have on this side, you've got your red, you're going towards the blue, you mix in your palm of violet, and you have a nice bluer color. Now, the reason why it becomes slightly mucky is because the permanent red has got a little bit of yellow in it. Yellow, the Parma Violet has blue in it. Yellow and blue make green, and together green will turn mucky when mixed with red. Now, this is all lessons that you learn in the CMW class using the book and exactly why I did that book for you guys. So it's an acceptable color. Is it the, the greatest color? No, but it looks pretty decent. It looks very rainbow-like if you don't mix those two. Now, if you mix the salmon and the violet, you're gonna get a little bit of brown in it, but it's not horrible.
It's a little bit horrible. It's not the... It's not a color combination that I would just use alone. If you look at, is it blendable? It's debatable. And green mixed with purple or violet makes brown. The minute you add in this color, it's going to muck up the whole thing. So according to her rules, you can add white and you can add black. Green tones beautifully with black and white. You'll get a nice light green and a dark green. So this, for anything floral, as long as you're not blending them and you're using them as a palette, it's beautiful. I filmed the first part of the video yesterday and I was going to put it up today and I'm really glad I waited because this morning when I woke up, Belinda Waters, who is a member of the group on Facebook handed in her challenge picture and it was a perfect example of when things go right when it came to this color combination and I got very excited when I saw it because one this is exactly what I would have done if I was doing a full demo on these colors and how to use this palette I just wanted to point out some of the things that she did that were perfect for this color combination. Down the middle of the leaf, you could definitely see she just put the green and she added in a little bit of the white. She may have added in a drop of the salmon yellow just to brighten it up, but for the most part, it is what it is. It's the green. She didn't blend it. Surrounding it, you could see the salmon pink and it slowly morphs into the permanent red. And on the outer edges, she added in the Parma Violet in the exact spots that she should have been adding. There is a little bit of brown in here, and that you could see in the acorn. Now, she achieved that most probably with the black and a combination of all the colors. But the way she laid down the colors, you could see the light hitting it all in the right spots. You could see specks of the different colors that she put into that, but it didn't overpower itself with brown. This is not a highly blended picture, and I think it was exactly what this picture needed. It was perfect, and I think Belinda Waters has a little bit more experience than other people because I've seen her other work, and she usually puts up some really nice pictures. So thank you, Belinda, for giving me permission to use your picture. I thought it was just simple and nice, and you really did it well. And with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.